Hey boys, I got something for us today. This is the Hercules four and a half inch angle grinder. This is the 11 amp model. I saw lots of reviews online of the seven amp model and it looked to be pretty well built. So I figured this was worth the risk. They had a coupon in the coupon book and it came for $59. So $59 11 amp grinder. And so with the coupon, you're talking about getting any, depending on which brand and which seller, anywhere between one and three of these for the price of one Makita. Now, I, I mean, in my opinion, Makita is the best grinder in the world. And I'd imagine that this will not be just a step below it. I imagine this will be really good though, based on the, the, reviews i've seen of the 7 amp it's got nice bearings in it got nice gears in it and it's the, the armature is well protected so it's it's well built i imagine this 11 amp will just be that maybe even more so but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the tool do some work with it and then we're going to take it apart so i've already emptied out the box first of all let me start the box most of that Chicago electric stuff, I mean, anytime you pick it up, the box is so dinky and thin that it just, it just wants to crumble in your hands. It's just, I mean, it's packaged in garbage because it's garbage. This thing, I mean, this is a proper box. I mean, I've even gotten this thing, left it out in the rain, went and dug it out of the trash to do this review because I wanted to talk about the box. The products UL listed, 11 amp. It does still have that dinky 90 day warranty. Of course you can buy the extended warranty and if you do buy the extended warranty, it's no questions asked, um, which is, that's cool. So on one side, you don't have a warranty. On the other side, you buy the good warranty and it's like, it, it, it doesn't matter what you do to the tool, the warranty covers it. And this is made in China. I can't remember where it says that. At. Ah, right here. Professionally made in China for Hercules tools. Like saying professionally is going to make it better. So, anyhow, enough picking. Here it is. Hercules. This is the business in here. Four and a half inch, 120 volt, 11 amp. Four and a half inch, 5 eighths, 11 thread per inch spindle. 7 eighths adapter included, 11,000 RPMs. Everything, everything else is. Switch feels good, got a nice click to it. It does have the dummy switch on it. And by dummy switch, I mean the lock on. And the reason I call it the dummy switch is because if you use that, you're a dummy. If you don't have the strength to squeeze this, you need to put the grinder down and go get a cup of coffee. You're tired. It's gonna come out of your hands. And if it does come out of your hands, when it's locked on, it's gonna bite you. It's gonna bite you hard and it's gonna hurt. If you, oh, but I don't like fidgeting with this little safety doodad, but I don't wanna take it off. If you get to where you use this thing enough, partner, catching that little safety switch becomes second nature. You just get to where you just know it's there and you just grab it. It's like, it's like starting your car. You just, you just get used to knowing that that's the key. That's it. As far as the guard goes, it's a quick move guard. And one thing I like about this guard is it's indexed. See if I can show you that. Indexed to only be able to come off in one spot. See how it's got the hole here is different size from the hole here. Is yeah, it's just oh, there it goes. Sorry. There you go. Here, this makes my point a whole lot better. See how this one's little and that one's big. So that means that oh, and then there's another one here. It's got to be in exactly that spot for it to come off. So the odds that you're gonna get into just exactly that spot, pretty slim. So it's gonna, you know, a lot of these things are held on with just two tabs. Well, on those two tabs, there's at least two spots on the deal where it can all come off. Not so on this. It's got exactly one spot to come off and that's it. So I do like the guard on that, and I do use guards on my tools. They send it to you with a Hercules brand disc. They even send you an extra set of bushings, a 
bushings, excuse me, an extra set of brushes. And of course you get a spanner wrench. Another feature I like is this, uh, this adapter here. This 7 8 adapter is held on with an O-ring. I'm not going to wrestle it off, just trust me, that's an O-ring holding it on. So that's pretty cool that it gets held in place and properly affixed with an O-ring. Because, you know, a lot of these things, you know, you turn it over and this sucker falls off. Whenever I'm using a wire wheel or whatever, I like to leave this thing on. Um, you know, the ones that are already threaded. And the reason I like to leave this on is because it, it makes the wire wheel easier to come off. It's like a washer. It is a washer. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to use this tool to fix that trailer. This trailer has gone down the road with something pushing against it that was heavy and bent itself here and then the other side the same way. And then through the middle here where tires would go, you know, like if you're, if you're driving a tractor up it, you know, your tires end up on this rail and the corresponding rail on the other side. It's bent right here. See where that rust is? That's where it's bowed out. So we're just going to rehab this trailer gate, get it out of my shop. I'm going to use this Lennox Metal Max blade. I'm doing it for two reasons. One, this thing is prone to binding up and it cuts slower and it um, uh, takes a little more pressure to cut. All that correlates to a higher amperage load. So what we're going to do is we're going to test straining the tool. That's reason number one I'm going to use this. Reason number two is my shop is fairly clean right now. And I don't want to get a bunch of abrasive dust everywhere. And it's rainy outside and I don't want to cut in the rain. So we'll get to working on that. And then after we get this done, then we'll take this thing apart. The video. Well, guys, it's now a couple of days from the last time I was on this thing. And I realized that when I made the cuts on the trailer, which is right over here, that I didn't, didn't press record. So I got a piece of 120 wall DOM here. We'll take some cuts on it. What I can tell you is this thing cuts pretty well. It uh, really does the job. I'm 240 pounds and fairly muscular and I was pushing with as much force as I could with my tricep here to make these cuts so I put a pretty good load on the grinder let's take it apart and see what we did Torx. these screws have a little bit of blue Loctite on them so that's nice very smooth i'm not going to press this out because this this shaft is this gear is pressed onto this shaft and into the bearing so the bearing is encased here this is nicely nice enough machine got an o-ring there to retain the grease spins really well no discernible up and down or well got a little ever so slight side to side play the teeth are all clean, nothing, uh, no burrs or anything. Nut holding the uh, pinion gear on there. Nice white grease. I think that's dielectric grease. I'm not sure, but I think that's what it is. So there's the head housing, and again, another o ring to keep the grease where it goes. There's a hole of the armature. Uh, this is cast aluminum and then machined. Armature is got this retaining 
I don't know, cable, I guess you'd call it. This plastic stuff here all around it. This white stuff. The only purpose of that white stuff is to hold the um, hold the windings more securely. And then you've got even more schmoo here right around where the connections are. So this armature is like really nice. You know, because all these, these connections are where they break at. One of these here. Yeah, I was, that's way more impressive than I would have thought. It's even got this shield here to uh, protect the bearing even that much more. And that bearing is a closed bearing. It's got a, a rubber bushing on it. Uh, that's what the bearing sits in. So this bearing sits in this rubber bushing. And it, that's a CW bearing. So that's a, it's a Chinese bearing, but it's a name brand bearing. So my assumption is that the other bearings would be name brand as well. But so the directional fan rides in this area here. So if this wasn't here, if you had a chunk of metal fall into the fan grooves, then it could, it, it, it would slip right behind the fan and be in next to the field or get down into the armature. So what this does is, is if a little chunk of metal gets in there, it lands on this thing, next time you turn the grinder on, more than likely it'll spit it back out. So that's what that's for. As far as changing the, uh, I left the brushes in there, I don't know if I'll be able to show you that, yeah. So as far as changing the brushes, I've gotta take this black plastic piece off in the back. So I'll get that unscrewed and we'll get back to this thing. that's really strong that's nicely made good injection molded part it's got some some stiffener and whatnot for the for the switch so this is one side of the switch bracket and then there's the switch in there so when you squeeze here there's the switch engagement it's a name brand switch So a Marquardt switch. Other than like the armature or the field breaking, which it's all like super glued and well done. The only thing that's gonna break on you is that switch and uh, the cord. And that's all easy enough. Cord screwed in, got a nice fixture there for that. You know, you might break this uh, this arm, and that'd be the one concern I had about this. You know, if I broke a, if I got to this point right here and broke a Milwaukee grinder, I could carry this up to the local supply house, and uh, you know, the electric tool repair joint, and they could have it back together for me and new parts in today, and it'd be ready for me tomorrow. I don't know that you can get parts for this thing to fix it, so this might be. A very nicely built disposable grinder except for the switch and the bearings and the nice thing is is really the only thing that's going to break it in the life of the tool is probably the switch the cord or the bearings which is all easy to easy enough to source so that's a good deal um, I've not seen if uh, Hercules or, or if Harbor Freight can can get you parts for this thing uh, you know, when you look on the Harbor Freight website, sometimes they can get parts for stuff reasonably, and sometimes it's like a slow boat from China, 8 to 12 weeks to get the parts, um, and sometimes they can't get parts at all. Um, eight weeks for a grinder, you, you're just out of business. You know, you throw it, in the, throw it in the bucket, and, you know, if the parts come in, great. You fix it. If not, great. Um, and also, honestly, yeah, I don't know what they want aftermarket for this switch, but I bet you time you go for a switch and a bearing um time you figure your time you're probably two-thirds of the way to another grinder if you use the coupon and get it for 59 dollars so i would consider this based on that based on the likelihood that the parts would be again if you can get the parts and if you can get them reasonably and if you can get them um quickly enough then, then this is a totally, you know, repairable, um, um, 
maintainable quality tool if you can't get the parts then as nicely as it's built it's still just a disposable tool because it's cheap enough to be a disposable tool and the parts are that hard to get if they are hard to get i hope in, i hope that made sense to anybody besides me um so would i buy this Do I think the Makita is a better grinder? Yeah, I do. Mainly because you can fix it. And that's something Harbor Freight needs to do. That's I'm going to call that out right here. Harbor Freight needs to have a Harbor Freight Tools repair website where you can go on the website, find this guy's parts, click order, and the parts come to you. Uh, one thing I am going to do while I'm in here is I am going to disable this dummy switch. So this little tab is what does the does the holding on with the dummy switch right here so dummy switch sits right here and you click it and it it holds here and keeps the grinder on then you click this thing again the dummy switch pops out and then you can let it back down there's lots of opportunity for that to fail in the on position and like i say if you can't hold on to it it's gonna bite you there you go so that little tab's gone so now I can keep the switch in. I don't have this open hole here from junk to get in. So that's, a, that's a really heavy brush housing. That is more than it needs to be. I expected it to be a little stamp dilly. That's about twice as thick as I think it needs to be. Yeah! Forgot to put the white thing in. Forgot the white thing. Two point oh, and a little bit of the encouragement in the right direction, and there she is. Good as new. Oh, this is nice too. The handle is affixed not just to, but all the way through the motor body, and then also this being two piece, it's plenty of fixed enough to where it's uh, it's not gonna break in half on you. Uh, nice big thick casting here nice big thick reinforced post here but it being two piece you're going to have less of a heat transference issue to your hand and that's awful nice and i'm going to take the time all the wiring in this thing is all uh staked and whatnot so as not to get pulled so i'm going to take the time to keep all that because some nice guy in china professionally built this Let's see if I can show you this. That's the dummy switch there, and that's what it would have been able to push that down. You push that in that dummy switch. Uh, that little nibbling on the bottom of it would have held that on, and now it's disabled. So now some dummy can push on it and push on it and push on it. It won't do a thing. If you wanted to, you could index that head any which way, any which way you thought was reasonable to run this bad boy. If you wanted to put your switch up on the top, or you wanted your switch on the side, as opposed to on the bottom, up to you. I'm going to keep it like it's meant to be for now, but that is some food for thought. Especially considering I'm a left-handed driver. She works. Let's get her screwed all the way. So that won't work as it should be. Thanks guys.